man cops on the case. Hello. I am the man cop, aka Gavi. Gavi Zuli, or Alex, whichever one you prefer. Um, and I am appearing to have some controller issues you might have heard during the little song there. Uh, hopefully, I fix them and I don't get disconnected again, but we'll see. So today we're going to start off in Majula, and that's because I have no UI. There we go. A bunch of souls. Um, but first we can talk to our new friend. Oh, so you finally decided to join us. Let us resume our exploration of sorcery. Who are we? Us? No one else is here, old man. You're going crazy. The forces of magic and so And he, then he just repeats. He said, he's not, again, not terribly an interesting NPC. And that's... I mean, he's required in some ways if you're a mage. But he's mostly useful for reinforcing your pyromancy flame, which we won't be using, I don't believe. Uh, second thing I wanted to do, other than get my souls, is to get those dang binoculars. So I can see things real close up, even though I'm far away. I believe they're over here. You drop down there. Yep, from over here. This isn't them, I don't think. You know, it's a morning star, got cleric shaker, and chime. Look at the chime. Although we might have done that one with Lycia, but most clerics receive this as their first first sacred chime. They do indeed. If you start as a cleric, you get this. A catalyst for miracles and hexes. Hexes are interesting, which we'll talk about later. Uh ba 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 ba. Okay. Nothing all that interesting. Other than that, they use chimes in this land, other than and not. Um, talismans or holy symbols. Now, the binoculars. The binoculars are not on this. that screen, I don't think. There they are. Are a consumable item. Not a consumable item. They go on your quick bar. I can find them. Gosh. I need some binoculars to find my binoculars. Oh no! In this game, they're yeah, that's right. They're they're a weapon. Are they. But you see real far. On the original game, they were broke. Before Scholar, the first sin, and they might have patched out the original version too, but you could look while you're running, and you would carry, like, I don't know, carry your momentum is the wrong thing to say it, but essentially, it, since you zoomed in, it zoomed your character to speed up to that zoom in. So you could just keep doing this and running and rolling, and that was like the primary speed running strat. Okay. Let me check Linen Grast first. So I want to upgrade my uh, staff if at all possible. There you go. Now we need Large Titanite to go any further with our weapons. We do not currently have access to other than some random drops. All right. Excuse me, madam. Yes. Bear sexy class indeed. We want let's see. This is fifteen vigor. We want to be fit and healthy for our coming journey to the lost Bastille. I think we also got an Estus flask. Oh, we did not. But we did get a sublime bone dust. I told you about before, I believe. 
it'll make our Estus Flask heal us for more. There you go. And that one does have a little poofy animation. And the rest of this money will go... Let, let, let's check in on our old pile of the armor merchant real quick. See if he's got anything cool looking. Uh, how you progress his little okay, story okay. Uh, is you, find something you buy use. stuff from him. I don't know, bro. Why, why is anybody here? So he sells the infantry stuff, the falconer stuff. Now, the falconers are interesting. Helm worn by Vulgan falconers. Domestic Vulgan soldiers are infamously timid, so it is no wonder that this fierce band of mercenary falconers was hired to compensate. In practice, they serve as bodyguards for the affluent elite, and they serve well, such that nobody dares scrutinize their backgrounds. Um, this is an armor set for an enemy we won't see in this playthrough, because they only... Well, actually, in Scholar, they're the first sin of my change. Well, originally, they did not appear in uh, the first playthrough you did. They only appear in New Game Plus at the first area you start off. So as soon as you spawn in that little uh, Deus after the opening cutscene, there's a bunch of guys with falcons that they throw at you. Uh, we don't want any of this stuff right now. Maybe the shield. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get the silver eagle kite shield. Thanks very much. It looks, it looks better than this big old drum looking thing. There we go. Fits better with our clothing, I think. We'll get some more life gems. Some of that, that good berry juice. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Now, like I said, there's two entrances to the Bastille. One, this one, which it comes from No Man's War. And this one, which we got to via Giant Bird through the Forest of Fallen Giants. I'm going to start at this one, the more secretive of the two. Just because that's what I usually do. Um, I will go through the beginning of the other one, even though I really don't have to, just to show you it. Now, these guys, like I said before, are uh, the jailers of this place. Uh, they they're, they patrol. They're supposed to keep prisoners from escaping. They, they're not doing their jobs very well. Um, and like I said, they do use pyromancy. And you can tell they have a very primitive kind of look to them. But we're going to not mess with him right now. We're going to precariously come over this way. Now that um, are those royal soldiers that we saw a few of in the Force of the Fallen Giants. They're like the elite of Vendrick's army. There's some large, a large Titanite shard. We're gonna get the drop on this too. Hope I don't hit that. Now you see there's a bunch of dogs down there. But we know from the Forest of Fallen Giants that these barrels explode. Ow! That usually doesn't hit you. It usually kills all the things, but it missed one and hit me somehow. Not quite sure how that happened, but we'll be, it's alright. Okay. What you got for me, doggy? Now we go back up that way, but we saw a chest over here. And I'm sure nothing bad will happen to us in this strangely large arena with the chest. Uh-oh. Her buddy's back. And he's got some new tricks. Unfortunately, he still does his old tricks quite often, so... I'm gonna have to unequip those. Uh oh. <laughs> I got distracted. I was looking at my pretty new binoculars, and that's why I fell down. It, okay? So you can't make fun of me for it, or I'll get up. It'll hurt my feet, wings, because I was just an accident. Okay. We'll get back. He will come back. 
and I will hopefully not do that again. Chest. You, you did a bad thing, Nisto. Come on. Oh, uh, well, then go for the three. Scabby. Charge at me. Oh, that hit. Oh, a little bit of lag there. Oh. Hopefully that was not my controller just connecting that lag. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. We don't have to kill him. But I can do it. I can show you that I can do it. Okay, I can do it. I'm good at video games, I can do it. That was kind of weird. That was a punching attack. Just a weird one. I'm going to get rid of these, so I can switch between my staff and sword readily. That's loud. Give him the old barrage. Come on. Yeah. That's all right, damage, I guess. Stab. Stab. Slash, slash. Alright, Jim. Don't hit me. Oh, it hit me with something before. Oh, boy. Okay, one more time. I'm watching my stream here to see where I got hit. Oh, he hit me on that backswing. She whiz. I can do this. I've done this before. I'm a professional. And I'm a cop. A man cop. blow up dogs, at least. So I got that going for me. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. expect that to hit me. This so area's a little bit difficult to fight him in because of that hole I fell over it in there, and it's just kind of smaller in general. Also, the fact that he jumps up behind you. Uh-oh. This might kill him. Usually like to avoid that one. Okay. Now, I did get cursed there, which I'll explain after I hopefully do not die. Greedy. Okay. He's dumb. No. Alright. And he gives us some Twinkling Titanite. Twinkling Titanite 
is an upgrade material, much like the other Titanites, as you probably guessed. Uh, well, uh, caused by a cosmic event, apparently. But it's four unique items. So I believe this String Lake Sword, Drummond's Sword that we found, that upgrades with Titanite, or Twinkling Titanite. So named items, stuff like that. Uniques. Oh, uh, now curse. Uh, curse builds up just like any other uh, ailment, like I uh, mentioned before, the little bar. When it fills up, the thing happens. Uh, curse hollows you one further step when it goes off. So it's not like the first one where if you die to something that's cursing you, you lose half your health immediately and you have to get uncursed to do it. Uh, this, you just hollow one step. And... Uh, you don't have to cure it, you just use an effigy and you go back up the floor. We're a good boy now. A human effigy, fragrant branch of yore, and a coveted silver serpent ring. So, if anything, the chest is quite worth it. It used just to have the ring in it, which we already have an upgraded version of from uh, Malintia. But it also didn't have a pursuer there, so it's nice it gives you the fragrant branch now, which I'll read. A fragrant tree branch with a faint sweet smell restores the life of things turned to stone. Extended inhalation of the branch's scent can lead to coughing and nausea. Um, these are very useful, and it will actually be quite useful in this very area. Okay, now that I died three times... Let's try not to do that again, although we probably will, because I usually die at least once to the boss. So there was that pyromancy. That I'm trying to get that other dude. Oh. These guys look big and scary, and there's one that in particular <laughs> that's really annoying, but it's not really because they're all that dangerous. They're kind of too slow to really be all that. Let me in. Oh, that's our buddy, Luca Teal. I thought that might be you. You haven't changed a bit, have you? <laughs> the longer I am here, the more madness I discover. A wretched place indeed, but not without traces of its former glory. What could have caused such degradation? Ah, yes. I have not thanked you for humoring me the other day. This is for you. Of course, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> now that is pretty telling if you read the clues. How she gives you the human effigy, which was given... Our first one was given to us by the fire keepers. And, uh... It takes it uh, per peer closely at an effigy, and one begins to perceive a human form, but whose form it takes depends on the person looking. For us, it turned into us. So that kind of gave us our sense of self. And she sees nothing. Our land of Nera is surrounded by enemies and constantly at war. There is only one way up in Nera. Join the Order and prove yourself in battle. My family had little fortune and no name. I had to carve out a piece of the world for myself. With two things. My sword and my loyalty to my lord. I was raised to wield a sword from birth. Life was hard, but I never gave it a second thought. I had swift success on the battlefield, and quickly attained respectable stature. And then I... And then I came here... to... Have you heard of the undead? These poor souls affected by the curse. An undead gradually loses his humanity until his wits degrade completely. Finally, he turns hollow 
and preys upon others. And a hollow can never be human again. One can skirt this wicked fate only with the help of the souls found here. Assuming, of course, that the legends are true, I can only hope that they are. So that's why I took this angle here. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the reveal that she is hollowing. Uh, kind of strange that she is like half hollowed. Whereas pretty much in every other instance we've seen, as soon as you die once, you're the meat monster. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite sure. I think that's mostly just for dramatic effect. And as you can tell, she's starting to forget, which I told you before uh, ha basically happened to us and happened... What was that? Okay, I think we're safe. <laughs> but uh, forgetting your past is and yourself is part of the Undead Curse. Uh, and she also mentions that the legends state that you come here to find souls specific souls to either stave off or cure the curse of undeath and that's kind of a clue that drang like is not the metaphysical dimensions merging kind of uh super esoteric kind of place um but is an actual place or at least was an actual place at some point that had talk of the curse i'm sorry to burden you with talk of my fate. I suppose I've grown weary these days. I'm sorry. I su That's all for now. Send this chest beside you. Antiquated key. That's not going to be in there. Uh, this key is very old, but in very good condition, such that it should still function. Only, what does this key fit? Uh, actually, hmm. A uh, key to the soldier's door in the forest of the fallen giants. A fort was erected in the forest to face the giants, but now the soldiers are lost and hollowed. They are enfeebled, but not without honor, and continue to steadfastly con Yeah. I forgot to read that, but it basically you just... Says what I did, what I said before. That, that was where the giants fell. Kind of off topic. Let's continue on. Hmm. Got two royal soldiers over there, so I'm gonna go for this guy. Now, it, it can be dangerous fighting him here because he's got these big swinging attacks. He's big, and you can fall off. Oh, hit me with that pyromancy. And you see, they got more than one kind of pyromancy. So they got a fireball and a spell con called conflagration, which is that just short blast. Now, there's another one up here, and this is the annoying one I told you about. Because you see that barrel in front of him? We don't want him to destroy that. But as soon as we come up to him, he's going to swing that big thing around and destroy it out of spite because he hates us. Because we took his job. Because we're the men cop now. Alright? We're, we're man cop. And he's he's the, the veteran that doesn't approve of our methods. So he's going to take away our the tools of our trade. Now, I believe if I just shoot him with a soul arrow, he's just going to push it immediately. So I'm going to try to get his attention up close. Actually, I'm just going to push it. blow up that which that is I believe the only way to open it, the, the door and the only way to respond to that is to run all the way back to the man fire and reset all the enemies and hope he doesn't do it again and this is a very important wall to blow up Uh, we cannot open this area. This is how you get here from the other entrance. 
We cannot open this door. But there is a bonfire here. Now you might be wondering why I put a bonfire so close to another one. Like, it's still an annoying enough walk that I don't want to do it to get to that barrel all the time. But, we'll see why. Oh, watch where you're swinging that thing, bud. So, as you can tell, Macduff here is a blacksmith, and he is quite hollowed and or insane. But you can tell from his eyes and face, he's hollowed. So he, it's possibly both. Actually, his eyes might not be all that. No. I mean, Leningrad seems way more hollowed than he is. So he might just be crazy. He is probably hollowed. We will give him the dull ember because Linen Grass won't take it. <laughs> what a marvelous ember. You've got stones, I pray. Give me stones, and I'll fortify your gear. Hmm. You know, I actually didn't know you could get him to uh let you buy stuff and reinforce without doing what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna do it anyway. Um now, if you don't have the dull ember, you don't get any of that. And he just sits there rambling about flame. Now, you're supposed to notice that candle there and how he's sitting next to it. So he's clearly drawn to flames. And then there's a uh, uh, torch sconce right here. Not really a sconce, it was a brazier. And a bonfire right next to it that you can use to, to light it. They do that. And then you rest to reload the area. Thankfully, you don't have to travel off. And there he is. Now he's in the proper space, and you can get that chest underneath. And you can just loot all these things. He doesn't care. So a bunch of good stuff in them. This NPC is very important. Um, I really like his function. I do not like that he is kind of so kind of out of the way to get to. Like, it's hard to know um, how to blow up this wall. It's like you wouldn't even it'd be difficult to even know you could push that thing if that guy up there didn't destroy it before you even knew it was there. So I know at least one person that went through the whole game without even knowing he was there. Which is not good, because he's the way that you... Oops. Come here. You like flame. I ought to fetch a new ember. Flame, dear flame. He is how you infuse your weapons. Infusing your weapons does like what our fire sword already has. Um, you get stones, and you use those stones to infuse your weapons with certain attributes. Um, you have magic, which as you can see makes it do magic damage and scale off your intelligence. Or your magic bonus, which is basically your intelligence. Uh, that one next to it is fire, uh, which does what our longsword does. Makes it do fire damage and scale off your fire bonus. Uh, lightning, which makes it scale off your lightning bonus, basically your faith, and do lightning damage. Uh, dark, which does all those things except for with dark. 
poison, which makes your weapon uh, apply poison and do poison buildup. Bleed, which does the same thing with bleed. Raw, which is an interesting one. It makes your base, the base damage of the weapon quite a bit higher, but reduces the scaling to basically nothing. So these are, that's all right if you're going a mage build like we are. So we might use that, but it's mostly for early on because we won't have a lot of strength and dexterity, but if we put raw on it, it, it'll help us keep up a little bit. Enchanted, which is a little different from magic, it, it doesn't make it do magic damage, but it makes it scale off your magic bonus. It's a little odd. I'm not entirely sure what the overall purpose of it is. So I usually don't use that. Um, mundane. Mundane is an odd one. It, I believe, reduces the base damage, but ups the scaling eventually as you, uh... That might not be what my mundane exactly does. I'll get, I'll get back to you on what mundane does. Uh, and then you can just take off what you have. And if you see, if we take it off, we'll do more damage, but it will be just physical damage, which can be good because if we come across a uh, enemy with fire resistance and our fire damage isn't doing anything, then we'll actually be doing less than if we just had a normal long sword. But we won't be doing that right now. And this is the hammer we just got. An old smithing hammer. Looks like a typical hammer, but it is in fact incredibly sturdy. Some say it was the hammer used long ago by a famed blacksmith of yore. That is a reference to Andre from of Astora from uh, Dark Souls 1. Because that is, you get that weapon for killing Andre, I think. I think that's what you get. Be gone. I, I wanted to talk to you. He doesn't have a lot to say, to be honest. McDuff. Even though I love him for what he does for you, uh, he himself is just kind of crazy and flames. talks of flames. I give you my heart, and you wave it and fold it. <laughs> From the start of time, flame allowed man to flourish, and even now he devises new fiery arts, but his reason makes him doubt flame. So we waver and falter. Kind of a poignant thing for a crazy man to say. The I take it back. Power the gods. In the end, it is all beyond our reach. And so flame allures us, and we attempt to harness its power. So again, very much of the idea of flame being a uh, both both a in lore like just an actual draw to the undead, and it, you know obviously it's a, a metaphor for uh, uh, humanity in general. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so you can buy a lot of cool stuff from him. A lot of good weapons. Swing spear is pretty good. Like that. And you can buy a lot of ammo from him. Uh, but more importantly, he sells an unlimited amount of large Titanite shards. Very useful, and he can also re repair and reinforce your weapons. And, well... We'll, we'll stick with the fire long sword for now until I find a weapon that I think is cool. Um, will we be able to go up to plus six? Let's see. We need three. We can get three. Do we have enough? Yeah, we do. Cool. Now, you see, we need uh, Titanite chunks, which we have not come across yet. And we can't get through on this side either. I 
must head back up. Kill his jerk. Oh, he got me. That's just a grow. And it's kind of it, a throw. And it's kind of a pitiful throw, to be honest with you. Sure, throws can just basically kill you. There used to be a dog over there. I don't know why they removed him. He's one of those that just dropped random stuff. Like, I think you can actually get, like, a super in-game sword off of them. And it can get kind of dicey over here because there's a lot of these guys. Oh! This weapon spark set those off. But we're good. And it, it, I, I count that as a win. Oh. I will use my first branch of yore on this man. Now these hollows that you use them on are still hollowed even though they were petrified. So he's just going to attack us. So we kill him. And he doesn't respawn. Now I'm going to open this door and then I'm going to run away. Okay, they don't aggro. I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to run away because there's going to be a bunch of people. And we're going to put this... Spear the uh, soul barrage the test. That's all right. That's all right. It's done for All right, come on. Thanks. Now, if you can't do enough damage, or you don't have a uh, a weapon that can kind of sweep through them, that can be a very unpleasant experience for you. The common fruit. That's nice. Uh, this common fruit has no taste, but when facing a true test of metal, it benefits, its benefits can make the difference between life and death. It temporarily boosts poison resist. Dark Souls 2 added a lot of just kind of random consumable items that I've never really used, but they're nice to have, I suppose. Add a bit of flavor, unlike that common fruit. Ew. Uh, let's go this way first. Well, no, let's go this way first. I'll show you something. You see this? No, it's not this window. It's further down. And you notice these cages here were at the uh, No Man's Wharf. That's what uh, man, uh, we put man, us being man cop. This, these are our man cages. And that's a man that we've caged up. Are you gonna... And as men typically do... Can I break you out of there? No. I'll show you what men do later on. Okay, this door, you're you're gonna find a lot of uh, messages telling you to open it and just run through if you play online. But as you can see, it's a sheer drop. This is the worst short shortcut in history. Um, that little area up there where I said there was a dog in an earlier edition of the game, you can jump off from that into this. And they say they they're I guess they treat that as a shortcut, but because the jumping mechanics in Dark Souls is are terrible, uh, never do that. Like just don't. If you can't go through the soldiers, just wait until later in the game when you can. Don't unless you you've gotten real good at it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I can never make that jump. Okay. Now we're gonna go up. That ladder up there leads to the area up here. So. more of these guys. More of these barrels that will explode if we hit them with our fire lungs. Ow. The summon sign. Or Felicia the Brave. She has become something of a mean character. Uh, she's another one of those uh, just there to help you NPCs. Not really a whole lot of lore significance. Um, but she has a, kind of a aggressive, let's say, AI and she, that she's known for. Let me pull this and open up these gates. Fight some more dudes. I hope we don't blow ourselves up. 
And he's gonna, he always runs down and goes down the ladder. I don't know why. We, we, I get, we just spook him, but then he's like, oh no, I gotta, I gotta get my paycheck. But then he forgets we're man cop and we don't play by the rules. Now there's supposed to be. I guess I skip. Yeah. This is a, another summon, and this one is much more useful than Felicia, in my opinion. Um, we might end up using her if I have. I shouldn't have much trouble at, with this boss, but she is quite useful for it if you are having issues. And uh, boy, did I have issues the first time I fought this boss. And you'll see why. First, do I have a repair powder? No, I don't. That might be an issue, but we'll deal with it. Um, when I first played this game, I was I kind of thought, you know, this is a lot e and It was probably just because, you know, I was thinking, I've played the, the first game a couple times. I'm just used to it, so I'm not used to, you know this particular game but my skills probably carry over so but you know the game seems kind of easy and then I got to this boss and died for like an hour because immediately you see those three health bars and you're like what thankfully this one oh, this ruins is in. you do not have to fight there's there's the other ones but as you see they're just sitting there watching us if we jump down there with the guy who just fell down, uh, they will come and fight us, so we're going to try not to do that. You want to kill this guy up here, and you do that, you really want a shield that can block his stuff, because they can't really dodge it too well on this small platform, so you just want to block and circle him. I hope you don't run out of stamina like that. And we look for a tackle like that. And then when he falls off, do not follow him and just stand back and block him. Because he's going to jump back up with an attack, so you want, that's why you block. And hit him some more. Now when he goes down, these two will jump down. And we got to jump down to fight him or they'll come up here and we, don't, we need to space them out. You do take fall damage though. Be careful with that. Now, fighting them uh, together is difficult, especially if you're new, oh, or me, apparently. Uh, best way is a lot of patience. <laughs> Basically, every hard Dark Souls fight can be solved by mostly patience, uh, other than Ancient Dragon, but that's for later. Um, you want to not block that and instead just run away because it will break your block. But you want to get them attacking at the same time and hopefully not hitting you. Don't hit me. Nah. Yeah, we got we have low adaptability, so that's why I keep getting hit when I'm healing. Um, but yeah, you want to get them attacking at the same time so you can so they don't cover each other's recovery attacks. Now, I'm just going to rush past everything that I can just to get back to the boss room. Because there's a lot of dudes in the way, and I don't want to spend my time fighting them. Don't hit me. Thank you. Now, it is a kind of a difficult run back because there's like approximately 3 million of the Royal Guardsmen. But if you make it to the ladder down there... Hold on there, buddy. Uh, you'll mostly get them off your back. First boss death, though, I think. Unless you count the pursuer as a, as a boss. Even when I don't fight him as a boss. Another thing, they're weak to, I believe, 
lightning. So if we're having a lot of troubles, we can use that gold pine red. And if this is your first time, I definitely recommend saving your gold pine resin. Don't fall for this boss fight. Come on, Yahin. Come on. Especially when you're going with a blocking strategy, you really want to watch your stamina. I just want my cells. Ow. Now you do want to focus on one. Uh, you know, hit, hit, hit where you can hit, but the fight becomes significantly easier once you kill one. And see, I got lucky there because he did the uh, sidestep, but he could have attacked while the other one was recovering, either hitting me or preventing me from hitting him. That is, has much longer range than it even looks like it does. That's how I got hit last time. Oh, and then they both do that. Yeah, sometimes it's honestly better just to get hit by it because it can't, like, combo while you're down. So, another big thing is camera management. You want to keep them both, both in your field of view. Jump at me and you do something. Uh, this is why the Pilgrim Bell player, uh, she casts spells that do a lot of damage to them, and that's why she's pretty good, because you can just kite them around and let her uh, snipe them down. Very useful. But she can also fall down. Oh, yeah, they throw their shield. It makes them a little bit more aggressive until they go and pick it up. But uh, the summons for this can fall down, and that does trigger these guys to come in. So they, they're not always all that useful. And again, they also give them all more health. Okay. So, oh. pretty sweet looking move, but it hurts. Now oh, they get separated. You gotta keep them separate, except you don't want to keep them separated anymore. You lied to me, the offspring. Oh, oh no. Okay, I need to go off and heal. Yep, do that. Let me heal, please. There you go, thank you. You and my sights, Alicia. I'm gonna get you. No, I'm not. You're gonna... Oh! That was a good move. Good teamwork. Don't hit me. Alright, drink up. Don't hit me. Ow. Alright. Alright, do your spin. Now take damage. Take more damage. Do your spin. Take more damage. Die. There we go. So yeah. That's that's gonna be a lot of people's first fuck you moment with this game. <laughs> and uh, the boss is technically completely optional. And which you get really mad about after you spend hours doing it and you look up a guide and you realize I don't even have to do that. But then you're like, screw you game. I'm gonna kill him anyway. But then you don't for a while. There's their shield that does stay. <laughs> uh, this is also our first introduction, if you look around, which there will probably be a lot of summoning or a lot of signs if you're online, to illusionary walls. There's tons of them in here. In the first game, uh, illusionary walls, you would roll into them or attack them. Here, you just press the X button, 
and let's see if we can find one. There's a bunch in here. There you go. And that happens. Uh, a lot of people don't like that. I also kind of prefer the old way. But I do, I do like the animation. I like that it is an actual wall there. And it's not just spooky illusion magic somebody put there for no reason. Much more mechanical in nature, which I like. that we have that spell. Now we can have more of that spell. There's another one over here. Let's just get up here and get a homeward bone. How nice. And there's a couple more in here. There you go. One there. I believe one there. Target shield. Uh, that's a pretty good shield for parrying. And there's nothing in this one. Not even another door, nothing. It is a jape. And a rusted coin. So you don't really get much good out of those. But I, it's just because they put so many here, I guess. Decided not to spoil ya. It's a pretty good one up here, though. No, it's to the left here. This is another part where this guy here can destroy that, or you can destroy it, as I almost did. Because you see, my weapon strike hit it. If I hit it two more times or so, it would have been destroyed. A rogue water. A crimson water of unknown origin restores HP and spell uses. Though known to some as red holy water, not everyone acknowledges its holy status. A useful item. Uh, the those and like the divine blessings, they're kind of super last resorts, but I often even forget I have them. Hello, Sir Sorol. Thanks for, uh, watching. Okay. Now, this is a part that you're gonna... You, it's, a, it's a fuck you part, I guess you could say. There's, the, there's this, but you can hear those chains. Now, you stroll on through, but then up over there. That happens, and it kills you right after you kill that boss fight, and then you have to run through all the royal soldiers to get back here, and you lose like 40,000 souls, and you want to die. That's what happens there. Thank you, From Software, for this video game experience that you have crafted for my enjoyment. Alright, now there's still more to do here. I'm debating if I want to do the whole... Um steel I probably won't just because I think it's better to come back and do a later a portion of it later there's another boss here um, for now let's go back to Majula and spend these souls and take a drink of my yoohoo yes I do drink yoohoo um, I'm probably the, the only person in like a 180 mile radius that does but I like chocolate milk, but uh, I, uh, milk makes me um, have intestinal distress, and you who does not have milk in it. So it's the next best thing that I have found, at least. Um, yeah, we'll level up a little bit. Uh, we want to get some more life gems as well. Fifteen there. I just I like having it, my stat page nice and neat. Like you have no idea how hard it is for me not to put my faith up to five. It is so hard not to do it. Like it's on four, which is an even number, so that it's still good. 
but it could be five and be a multiple of five, which is even better than being an even number. But it's useless to us. But it could be five, and it would be so neat, but no. No, I will resist the temptation. Um, we want... Let's go ahead and get some intelligence. That will leave us at... Mm. We got enough souls. Well, we'll go all the way up to 25. Leave it there for a little bit. Should have probably got some attunement. We got more spells that we can use. Do some of these and get some life gems. You again? Yeah, it's me. It's me, Grandma. I need some of those life gems. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Granny. It's so nice of you. Uh, let's see if Shalakor has something to say. I'm not entirely sure what triggers her new uh, dialogues because it's a lot. Hello, kitty kitty. Oh, who are you again? <laughs> oh, I'm not serious. You make that joke have... every time I come in here. Are you going to see the old ones? Those four who have grown so incredibly ancient. They must have sprouted quite a thick coat of moss by now. For heaven's sake, no one even knows their names anymore. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, nothing like yourself. For you have a most pleasant scent. Grows nicer with each passing day. <laughs> I believe we have heard that before. But suited you. I like her voice acting, so I wanted to hear it again, okay? Um and we could also get upgrade our staff a little bit more. Uh we probably have enough souls to do that. But I think it so within my best interest, at least, as I did not want to go too late tonight, to just continue on. Um, yeah, I'll show you the other entrance. Uh, now, before, you would find a Hyde Knight over there. That was the second area they were from. Again, not in Hyde's Tower of Flame. And also not in an area adjacent to the forest, which is where you would find the other one. So, I don't know what their, their, their ideas were for the, the Hyde Knights, the original. Can't reach that guy. So we'll go down here. This can be a kind of a dangerous area. Because of that. So the other one, he ambushes you and fights you in a small area. Here, he fights you in a bigger area, but with a bunch of dogs. Not fair. He might despawn because I went in here. So I'm gonna come back and try and make him. No, he's going. Okay, I can come back here from the other area and, uh, from Macduff's workshop and take him down. Not these those guys down. And then you stab them in the back for being buttholes hiding. Right, Jim, I was hoping you dropped one of his, uh, armor pieces. And that's pretty much it. So you get a pursuer no matter which way you go. Damn. 
I think I'm going to kill the pursuer and then quit. And then tomorrow, or perhaps the next day, or perhaps the day after that, I don't know. Um, I will continue into another area. As I said, um, the Lost Bastille is kind like both as geographic as you can descri describe this game. Like, the geography of the game, as much as you can actually physically place it, the Lost Bastille is kind of in the middle of everything else. Everything kind of, like, flo flows through it in the beginning of the, uh, of the game. And, uh, as such, you're kind of meant to come here at a couple of different levels. And I can probably do everything here right now, just because I have a good sword and I know how to do it and everything like that. But... Uh, it'd be a lot easier to explain some of the stuff in there if we get to the other parts of the story. So I'm going to kill a pursuer, and then tomorrow, or next time I stream, we'll go somewhere else. I, say, I hope I kill the pursuer, and he doesn't kill me a bunch. A lot easier if you come up on them from this side. Hey, I hear, I heard you over there. Your clicky clackies. Somebody needs to trim these dogs' nails. My dog hates it when I trim these nails. So. And so I know it's spooky, and they're big and whoa. That wasn't nice. Don't hit me. I told you not to hit me. And you just did it. Anyway. So you must pair. I forgot to put my life gems. Do that. There you go. Oh! Okay. Good one. Oh, it takes him a long time to recover from that. Oh, is he just gonna run? You embarrassed, bro? Huh? Is that it? I'd done it before, and you didn't see me shrink into the ground and disappear. No, I went on. I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and went on. Okay? Let's respawn him and hope he doesn't pussy out again. Double kill. Yeah, there's, oh, I forgot about this little nook back here. This little cranny. Ooh, and there's an the Essiflex shower. I believe that used to be in a well that used to be here. I guess they took it out and put it there. Ooh, great story. Be nice. Where are you? Are you not, is he not going to come back? Uh... Might have lost. Great Sword of the Royal Swordsman. Its undulated... Undulated blade draws blood from its foes. Despite the magnificent magnificence of this weapon, it was terribly inadequate in the war against the mighty giants, because they're giant tree people. Well, the pursuer has abandoned us. He pursues no longer because he got embarrassed. So I think we can all agree that we should all let him know. Okay, go to his Twitter account. And you send him your thoughts and prayers, and you tell him it's okay. Alright? 
It's okay, Pursuit. We all make mistakes. Okay, but Twitter is probably not the place to, to mention that you make mistakes. Because they'll try to ruin your life. But... I at least believe in you, Pursuer. I love you, Pursuer. And I love you too. I think that's where we'll end. Um, thank you for watching. Um, we got one person talking in chat today and then he left, but... I, I love you too, person who left. Um, next time we will be going into a uh, forest again but this one a little bit uh, of a darker theme I love you so much I love you so much you come you come around next time okay and I love you more goodbye Mwah.